All right, now that we have covered the main features for the visual, we're going to start to dive deeper into the initial setup, where I'm going to explain all the fields for the visual. But first, I'm going to quickly take you through the sample report. If you remember from the introduction video, you can download the sample report from the description below. As for the sample report itself, when you open it up, you're going to be presented with multiple pages. Within every single page, you're going to have these two tabs at the top, graph visual plus the training view. The graph visual tab is always going to have a pre-configured variation of the chart available for your disposal. You can easily go through the settings and just play around with it. Whereas the training view is what we're going to be using during the course. This one doesn't have a visual within it. Here, we're actually going to be building the visuals from scratch and applying all the settings. So going back to the initial setup, one thing that I wanted to mention is that the graph visual is a little bit intimidating at first. It has 26 different fields. But for your convenience, we have already actually grouped them so you can easily go through them. The four groups that you have available are going to be the source items, the target items, link items, and also tooltip items. We're going to go through them a little bit later. Now, when it comes to the graph itself, it has three mandatory fields. Without these fields, the visual is just not going to work. So to showcase them, I'm going to create an instance of the graph visual. I'm going to resize it a bit, and I'm going to quickly disable the background and the title. And going back to the fields list, the three mandatory ones are source nodes, target nodes, and values. So what I'm going to do here is add source, target, and of course, the value. There you go. You have successfully created your first instance of the drill down graph visual. Now, the rest of the 23 fields are completely optional. So if you're satisfied with the base version, you don't have to worry about it. You can, of course, further customize the nodes through the formatting options, but those optional fields allow you to define things directly through the data. And the biggest power from that is that you can also use DAX calculated measures. So essentially, the graph can become almost as a living organism. It can change dynamically based on the values and based on the new refreshes that you have for your data. So going through the fields individually, we're going to start to go through the source fields because target fields are going to be exactly the same. So first thing that we have here is actually source image. So I'm going to drag the image right in. And first thing that you notice is that for some of the nodes, I have an image, but for some of them, I don't. That is because I haven't provided the image for the target nodes. So this is a quick way on how you can identify nodes that are only target nodes. Now, the next field is going to be source node color. For that one, we're going to eliminate the images for now. I just want to have more space for the colors. So and here, I'm just going to add in node colors. So source node colors right here, drag it in. And you can see that the graph automatically colors the nodes. And you can see them within the visual. Now, the colors can be provided in three variations. You can either provide the name for it. You can provide also an RGB code for it. And the last one is a hex code. What I would recommend is use hex codes because within the native color picker, you can actually copy the hex code from the color. So it's going to be easier to copy it from already existing reports or themes that you have been using. Now, the next one is going to be source node label. For these ones, we, there are a few reasons why we added it. So by default, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the names based on the source and target fields. Now, the source node labels and target node labels allow you to override these. So for example, you can see now this green node is copywriting. If I change the source node properties within the label, I'm going to add one and I'm going to add two. You can see that it showcases completely different information. And the best part about this is that it actually allows you to stack multiple columns. So you can have more information within a single queue. Just make sure that you don't over clutter the visual. Otherwise, it's going to be really hard for the end user to read it and actually navigate through it. Now, the next thing that we have here is actually going to be data driven shapes. So right here, you can see we have source node shapes and I'm going to add right here source node shapes. Dragging it in automatically adjusts the shapes for all the nodes that are within the graph. The currently available options for the shapes are easily foundable. You can go into the forward meaning options right here, open up nodes default category, and click on shape. And you can see all the shapes that the graph visuals support. In this case, those are going to be circle, rectangle, droplet, rhombus, and a diamond. Now, going back to the formatting options, 
The next item we're going to be covering is going to be category class. For this one, I'm actually going to be eliminating the shapes plus the colors. And I'm going to be dragging in the category field. There we go. So what happens here is you can also on a data level define specific categories for the nodes. And the added benefit of this is that afterwards, if we go into the formatting options and scroll down a bit more, you can see that it created multiple tabs for each of those categories. So essentially, you can even use just one data column from your table, which is with the categories. You can assign it to the graph, and then you can individually customize every single category within the graph visual. Now, going back to the fields list, the next item is going to be the node radius. So for this one, what I wanted to say is that by default, the radius is being derived from the value. So this is this field right here. But in some cases, you want the size to actually be coming from something else. A quick example of this could be, let's say, in sales. So where you have the deal amount plus, let's say, the amount of activities that you had between the actual partners. So there are multiple metrics that you can use for the sizing mechanism. That can, those can be either values or those can be the radiuses. Now, going to the next one is going to be source focus nodes. For this one, I'm actually going to be creating a different instance of the graph visual. So I'm just going to delete this one. I'm going to create a new one. For this, let's just quickly resize it. I'm going to open up the second table that you have within the sample report called hierarchy. And I'm going to add source, target, and I'm also going to go for value. There we go. And the reason why I'm doing this is because within this sample, I have provided the source focus nodes. The focus nodes essentially accept values of 1 and 0, so true or false. And what it allows you to do is to define which nodes are focus nodes. What I'm going to do here is drag in source focus nodes. When I first do it, nothing really changes here. But if I go under the formatting options and go under the navigation, here we have initial display mode. And if I switch this to the focus node, you can see that now I'm left only with a one singular node. This is because at this point, you enable the focus node exploration capability. What it means is that now I can easily just click on column B, for example, and start opening up additional levels. The added benefit of this is that you can allow your end user to essentially choose their own path that they want to explore without the need of opening up every single node within the visual. This is also going to really help with the performance where you have hundreds of different nodes. Now, going back to the fields list, what we have next is going to be the node Rs. For this one, we again going to quickly delete this sample and recreate a new one. So let's go over it here, create a new instance of the graph visual, and let's go for something simple, just source, target, value. And what I'm going to add here, if I scroll down, is going to be source node Rs. So I'm going to find the source node R field, which is located right here. And I'm going to drag this one in into the field itself. Once I do this, you can see that the graph now displays additional RS. RS allow you to basically identify another dimension on the graph. So those could be, for example, different departments, teams, something that relates those nodes in a core. Now, going forward, like I said, you have your fields for the target nodes. So those are going to be exactly the same as we discussed for the source nodes. A little bit down, we have our link properties. So for the links, there are a couple of things that you can customize. You can customize the link color. So the same principle, just drag in a column with the data, and that is going to automatically assign all the colors. So with the link colors, it's the same principle. Just drag in link colors into the field, and that is going to automatically assign the color for that particular link. Afterwards, we have our link labels, both numerical and textual. The principle for them is pretty simple. You're going to add in either values or textual overlay on top of the links itself. So right here, I'm just going to add link name for the link label textual. And I'm going to add the same value for right here, link value, drag it in. And you can see this is now being displayed in the labels on top of the links. The last thing that you can do here with the links is assign a category and create a dynamic width, which is going to be derived from a particular value. The two last fields that you have here are going to be regarding the tooltip. So you have separate tooltips for the nodes and separate tooltips for the links. The reason why we're doing this is because 
when you think about the graph or related data, you typically have information that describes the both entities at both ends. And it also has additional information that describes the type of connection that you have. So essentially, you can split them up and you don't need to overcrowd the visual. The way it works is pretty simple. So for example, if I add in, let's say, source node properties right here in the tooltip content field, and for the links, I'm going to say link name and link value. So the two same properties that we already have here. So link value and also link name. There we go. So if I right click on a node, you can see I have source node properties, the ones they added right here in the tooltip content. Whereas if I click on a link, I get what I added in the link tooltip field. So that allows you to really dynamically customize the graph visual. This is one of the most biggest strengths that the graph visual has. This is the data-driven formatting capability. All right, that's going to be it for the initial setup, and I'll see you in the interactions part.